Hello, everybody. I'm Persia Becky, and welcome back to another week of Persia. As I'm sure you recall, we are currently in the middle of reading the fourth book of Chumash, the book of Bamid Bar. Bamid Bar means in the desert. And for the whole book of Bamid Bar, the Jewish people are traveling in the desert on our way from Egypt, where we left in the book of Shemot, to get to our home of Israel. The name of this week's Parsha is Balak, and Balak is the name of one of the two main characters in the Parsha. In fact, Parsha Balak has a whole point of view flip, because most of the Torah is told from the point of view of like the Jewish people, God, Moshe, except Parsha Balak, which completely flips the perspective. It's going to tell it to us from the point of view of this guy Balak and one other main character that we're about to meet. So Balak is the king of the country of Moab. And the Parsha starts, Balak, Haman knows his own business being king of Moab when the Jewish people, we know they're traveling through the desert on their way to Israel, and they pass through right near Balak's country of Moab. And suddenly Balak's like, whoa, there are all these Jews right outside my country. I don't like that. I don't like Jews. I don't want them there. There's so many of them. It's disgusting. I don't want them. I want them to go away. And there's too many of them for me to fight. What am I going to do to get rid of these people? Never mind that they're like just passing through. They're on their way. He, he needs to get rid of them right now. Uh, so he sends messengers first to the nearby nation of Midian. He's like, hey, people of Midian, like, check it out. There's these Jews passing through near our countries. And like, they're gross. I don't like them. I don't want them nearby. I need to get rid of them. There's too many of them to fight. I'm thinking we can team up and hire this guy that we know called Bilam. He's our other main character. Now, this guy, Bilam, he's actually from the nation of Midian, though he kind of lives off on his own. And Bilam has a superpower. Bilam's superpower is if he blesses somebody, they're super blessed. And if he curses somebody, they're super cursed. Bad things happen to them. And Balak's like, if we hire Bilam to curse the Jewish people, then they'll be weak and cursed and we'll be able to fight them and win and kick them out of our neighborhood. Everyone likes this plan. So Balak sends messengers to Bilam and Bilam invites the messengers in. He's like, what can I do for you, gentlemen? And they're like, so we are sent here by King Balak of Moab uh, because there are these people called the Jewish people who are camped out right near his country. He hates them. He wants them to go away. So he wants to pay you to curse them so that he can fight them and win easily and kick them out. And Bilam's like, yeah, okay, totally sounds like a good plan. Uh, just one detail before I take a job, I always need to check with my God overnight because like I listen to Hashem, my blessing and cursing only works because Hashem agrees for it to work. So I'll just check with God. I'll get the okay and then I'll go with you. So overnight, Hashem, God's like, hey, Bilam, you want to tell me about your new your new job? And Bilam's like, yeah, this uh, this guy Balak, king of, king of Moab, wants to hire me uh, to curse the Jews because he hates them. Uh, and that way he can fight them easily and win. God's like, no deal. You can't go, Bilam, because you can't curse the Jews because I've already decided they are blessed. No cursing Jews. Uh, so in the morning, Bilam says to Balak's message, he's like, bad news, guys. Uh, God won't let me go. So just go tell Balak, like, sorry, no deal. So the messengers go home, but Balak is a king. He's not used to taking no for an answer. So he picks out some new messengers, better messengers. They're like more important people and they've got better gifts. And he sends them back to Bilam saying, like, no, like I'm not taking no for an answer. Come on, please, please, please. I will pay you lots of money. I will make you a rich man. I will give you lots and lots of gold and silver. Just come curse the Jews for me. And Bilam's like, listen, I already said that God won't let me go. But OK, you guys stay overnight. You came all the way here. I will just check in with Hashem one more time. Maybe God changed his mind and I'll get to go. We'll see. So overnight, Hashem says, hey, Bilam, if these guys are again from Balak to get you to go curse the Jews, you know what, Hashem says, I will let you go with them. But you can only say exactly what I, you can only say and do exactly what I tell you to say and do. And you have to say exactly everything that I tell you to say and do. And Bilam's like, yeah, okay, you know, that sounds fair. So in the morning, he tells the messengers, like, okay, guys, good news and bad news. The good news is, God said I can go with you. The bad news is I can only say and do exactly what God tells me, and I have to say and do exactly what God tells me. So, like, I know you're you're hiring me to give a curse. It might not end up that way. It's totally dependent on what God wants. And the messengers like, okay, we'll take it. Uh, so Bilam saddles up his donkey to ride with the messengers, just following them back to Balak. And while he's riding on his way, on riding on his donkey, an angel shows up holding a big sword right in front of. Bilam on his donkey. Now, 
uh, angels can like mess with like whether or not they can be seen or not. So the angel lets the donkey see the angel, but Bilam cannot see the angel. Now the donkey does not want to ride straight into the angel's sword. So the donkey walks off the path. And Bilam doesn't know why the donkey's going off road. So he starts hitting the donkey. He's like, donkey, donkey, get back on the road. Come on, donkey. Look, come on, come on. What's going on here? We're not off road in it. They go back onto the road, ride a little further. And then again, the angel appears in front of the donkey holding a sword. Donkey sees it. Bilam doesn't. Uh, and this time, you can't go off road because they've got fences on either side of the path. So the donkey, like, presses up against the fence to avoid walking right into the angel's sword. Uh, which means Bilam's leg gets squished between the donkey and the le- and the fence. And he's like, ow, my leg! And he starts hitting the donkey. He's like, bad donkey, bad donkey, you hurt my leg! Bad, bad! Get get back into the middle of the road, keep moving! The donkey keeps moving. They rod a little further, and the road, the road gets so narrow that, like, there is not even room to squish against a fence, let alone go off-road. And the angel appears in front of them again, holding it a sword. And this time, donkey doesn't want to ride in sword, can't squish to the side, can't go off-road, so the donkey just sits down, refuses to move. And Bilam is like hopping mad. And he's hitting the donkey with a stick. And he's like, get up, get up, get up, you stupid donkey. Come on, come on. We're not taking naps here. We have places to be. Come on. And then God does something wild. God makes the donkey able to talk like a human being. And the donkey's like, excuse me, Bilam. Why are you hitting me like that? Why have you been hitting me three times? That's so mean. And Bilam does not say, oh my god, a talking donkey! Instead, he's like, okay, talking donkey, whatever. Bilam's like, you know why I'm hitting you? I'm hitting you because you are misbehaving. You are embarrassing me. You are slowing me down. You hurt my leg. You are being a bad donkey. If I had a sword in my hand right now, I would just kill you now, donkey. And donkey's like, whoa. Come on, Bilam. Way harsh, man. Donkey's like, we go way back, you and me, Bilam. Donkey's like, how many years have we two been working together? We're like this. Have I ever treated you like this before? Bilam's like, no, you haven't. First time for everything, I guess. And then finally, God makes Bilam able to see the angel standing there with a big sword. And Bilam's like, whoa, angel with a sword. Talking donkey didn't do it. Angel with a sword did. Uh, and Bilam's like, an angel's like, yeah, Bilam. Why were you hitting your donkey three times? She was only doing good things for you. Like, I'm standing here with my sword, the angel says. And you know what would have happened if the donkey hadn't turned away or pressed up against the wall or sat down? I would have killed you with my sword, but I would have let the donkey live. So she was only helping you, Bilam. And here you're hitting her in thanks, some thanks. And Bilam's like, okay, well, clearly I did not have all the facts. I'm sorry, donkey, for hitting you. Thank you for saving my life. I am sorry, angel. I did not know you were here. I gather from your presence that you don't want me going on this business trip. So just say the word and I'll turn around and go home. Tough luck for Balak. And the angel's like, you know what? No, no, I'm not. I'm not going to say the word. I'm not going to tell you to go home. I don't like your attitude. Uh, but but you know what? You can you can go on this journey. You can you can take this job. The angel says. Uh, I just came here to warn you of one thing, Bill. I came here to remind you that when you to do this job, you can only say and do what God tells you to say and do, and you have to say and do everything. That God tells you to say and do. And Bilam's like, yeah, okay, God, it. Message received loud and clear. The angel's like, okay, okay, then you can you can take the job then. So uh, Bilam continues right along with his donkey until they meet up with Balak. And we get there, Balak's like, what took you so long? Why didn't you come the first time? And Bilam's like, okay, well, I'm here now, so we don't need to rehash what took me so long. Uh, but listen, Bilam says, yeah, I'm here now, but I got to warn you, cards on the table, King Balak. You're hiring me to do, give a curse I, that I can't make any promises about because I can only say and do exactly what Hashem tells me to say and do, and I have to say and do everything that Hashem tells me to say and do. So just just be forewarned about that. And Balak's like, yeah, 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 whatever. It's fine. It'll be a curse. Uh, let me show you those people that I want you to curse. He takes them up the mountain. They look down at where the Jewish people are camped. And Balak's like, you see them? You're going to curse them. Uh, and they eat together, and then Bilam gets to work. Bilam's like, okay, King Balak, here's what's going to happen. You are going to build seven Mizbeachs, and on each one of those seven Mizbeachs, you're going to sacrifice a cow and a sheep to Hashem. It will give Hashem lots of presents first. You know, get, get, that always gets God in a good mood. Uh, and then I am going, you're going to stand here with the Mizbeachs. I'm going to wander off into the desert and see if God tells me anything. So they do the sacrifices. Bilam wanders off. And sure enough, Hashem gives Bilam a message. 
He comes back and Balak's like, so what does God say? And Balaam's like, I'll tell you what God says. And he launches into a blessing of the Jewish people. That includes being like, ha ha, Balak, you're such a loser. You hired me to curse them, but I can't curse them because God says they're super blessed. And in fact, I wish that I were like them because they are so cool. They're honestly hashtag goals. Um, Balak is not happy about this. And Balak's like, okay, let's try this again. I told you to curse the people, not bless them curse them. Balaam's like, well, I warned you, dude. That's just what God told me to say. And Balak's like, okay, well, we're going to try this again. I'm going to take you somewhere else, and we'll just start fresh. So he takes him somewhere else. He sees a different view of the people. And again, he builds, uh, Balaam tells him he builds seven Mizbeachs, sacrifices a cow and a sheep on each one. So that's seven cows, seven sheep. And then Balaam sa- again says, he's like, okay, you wait here. I'm going to go wander off and see if God gives me any any fun things to say. Balaam wanders off. He comes back and Balak's like, so what does God say? And Balaam's like, I'll tell you what God says. And he launches into another blessing of the Jewish people. He's like, wow, there's never going to be like bad stuff happening. These people are amazing. They are so great. God loves them. God did great things for them. God's going to continue doing great things for them. God will destroy all their enemies. And Balak is not enjoying this. Balak's like, listen, mister, I hired you to curse the people, not bless them. He's like, you know what? Fine. Balak says, I'm just going to cut, cut my losses. Don't bless them. Don't curse them. Just just shut up. Can you do that, Bilam? And Bilam's like, actually, I can't. I told you. I have to say everything that God tells me to say. And Balak's like, okay, okay. You know what? We're just going to try this one more time. I'm going to take you somewhere else. And you're going to curse them properly this time. They go somewhere else. Again, he builds seven Mizbeachs. He sacrifices a cow and a sheep on each one. But this time, Bilam doesn't even wander off to the desert to see what God says. Bilam's like, okay, I get it. God likes God likes blessing the Jews. I'm just going to stick with what God likes, thanks. And Bilam launches into a third blessing. He's like, wow, these people, look, they're, they're so organized. They look beautiful. It's amazing. It's, like, it's such, such a joy to look down upon these people and how, how beautiful they are and what a beautiful like future they have. Uh, God loves them. God's always been there for them. God will be there for them. Like A plus, A plus Jews. Balak gets so mad that he claps his hands like you know if you're angry and you know what clap your hands slow clap he's like wow 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 Bilam, i hired you to curse the people and instead you bless them not once not twice but three times wow wow like you know you know I, I i said that i would pay you a lot of money for this blessing but apparently apparently your god is more important to you than getting rich and Bilam's like yeah yeah i told you i can only do exactly what God t- tells me to do. But you know what Bilam says? Like before I before I go, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice. I'm gonna tell you about the future. And then Bilam gives a fourth blessing to the Jewish people. He's like, wow, these people like uh, oh my gosh, I see I see such a bright future for them. Like in the in the future they're gonna do amazing things because Hashem is there for them. They're gonna accomplish wonderful stuff. And oh also Balak, your nation, and this nation, and that nation, and that nation, and that nation, all these nations are gonna be totally destroyed. They're gonna get wiped out, they're gonna be forgotten in the annals of history, but the Jewish people are gonna keep going. Uh and then Bilam goes home, Balak goes home. Looks like Bilam's not getting that prize money. And at the end of the Persia, our point of view finally flips back to the Jewish people. Uh, but bad news, it looks like Balak did not give up with the curse plan that didn't pan out. Because now there is a new threat from the, pe- the team up of the nations of Moab and Midian. Uh, some of the women from the nations of Moab and Midian uh, are now seducing people in the Jewish people not just seducing them romantically, but specifically seducing them to do idol worship. Because, hey, if you can't curse them because Hashem loves them so much, maybe make God a little less happy with the people, huh? huh? So uh, these women from Midian and Moab are seducing the Jewish people into praying to Peor, the idol, the made-up God of their of their nations. Uh, and this is bad. This is super, God. God really doesn't like it when we do idol worship. Like heads up. Like don't don't do that. Come on. And Mo, like this is a serious problem. And Moshe has to call over all the tribe tribal leaders and every shevet leader. Moshe's like, okay, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna go through your own shevet. You're gonna find everyone who's doing this idol worship. And you're gonna have to kill them because like idol worship is like it's a big no no. We can't do that. And 
before the leaders even follow through with this, another guy who was like a leader in his own right uh, starts doing idol worship with one of these Midianite ladies right in front of the, not just like private, it's in public, like in front of everyone, while people are like, oh no, we're so sad that God is punishing us for idol worship. He's like, hey, guess what, guys? I'm doing idol worship, and it's great. It's such a problem, like, nobody doesn't know what to do. Uh, so Aaron's grandson, Pinchas, he knows what to do. He takes a spear, he goes up to the two people doing idol worship in public and trying to get everyone to join in, and he stabs them both to death in one fell swoop. Uh, and he manages to put a stop to this uh, idol worship craze in a bit of a bloody way, but it effectively ends the punishment for the Jewish people, ends this bout of uh, of idol worship, and that is the end of Parshat Balak. Shabbat Shalom.